We're joined today on the Crossbolts by a fantastic special guest, Anna Horford, Al Horford's sister. So an Al Horford inspired topic today, better career, Al Horford in college or Al Horford in the pros? This is a tough, he's accomplished so much in both. I'm gonna have to go with the NBA though. Maybe I'm biased because I've been an Al Horford fan ever since he stepped onto an NBA court and I didn't watch him as much in college, but what he's done in the NBA is just, just incredible. He's one of the best shooting big men in the NBA, somebody that can hit threes at a high clip at seven feet tall, five-time NBA All-Star. He was an NBA All-Defensive second team selection, All-NBA third team. Like his accomplishments and accolades in the NBA over the past decade have been incredible. So. Despite the titles, I'm going with his <laughs> NBA accomplishments. Olivia? Obviously, I disagree. And this is no knock on Al Horford's NBA career, which, as you said, has been phenomenal. But back-to-back -back championships in college, that's so hard to do, especially with the March Madness format. They were the best team in the country, and it led us to getting Billy Donovan as our head coach. So we thank you, Al Horford, for doing that. And so I'm going to have to go with college career, Al Horford. Okay, so this is a tough one because the back-to-back -back national championships, that's obviously something that many teams have not done. No college team has done it since. I don't know if there's been a college team since then that could beat that team in a national championship game, but I still think I would say NBA just because everything you do in college sets you up, hopefully, for an NBA career. So I think college that those were really like the stepping stones and learning blocks for him. And then he really got to hone his craft when he got to the NBA. Um, he's, you know, extended his game, as you said, into like three point shooting and whatnot. And just what he's done being a five time all star, never missing, you know, the playoffs uh, in his over his whole career. And he's just he has a lot to be proud of. So I think I would say NBA as well. Welcome to the Daily Thunder Podcast. I'm your host, Brandon Rivar, beat writer for DailyThunder.com. Every week, we will have guests ranging from national sports writers and local reporters to OKC celebrities and Thunder staff and players. This week, I'm excited. Our featured guest is Anna Horford, host of the Horford Happy Hour Podcast, sister to Thunder Center, Al Horford, and now my all-time favorite Horford sibling. Welcome to the Daily Thunder Podcast. I'm your host, beat writer for DailyThunder.com, Brandon Rabar. I am joined by my co-host, Olivia Punchall, <laughs> uh, senior writer for DailyThunder.com. Hey, Olivia. Hey, how's it going? I am good. I'm pumped because we're joined today. I'm excited about this guest. <laughs> I follow her on Twitter, and I got to say I was pumped when she started following me on Twitter. <laughs> I felt like I made it, Mama. Uh, <laughs> we're joined by Anna Horford. And she is the host of the Horford Happy Hour podcast. And she is the sister to Thunder Center, Al Horford. Now, is it big sister or little sister, Anna? I am the little sister. Al is the oldest of the Horford children. All right. So was he a good bigger brother to you? Like from being very little? You know, we see this. He seems like such a great high character dude. But how was he as a big brother growing up? Yeah, no, he was great. I joke about how, like, every team he's on, he takes on the role of, like, the team dad. <laughs> and he was pretty much – there are five of us. So he was pretty much, like, the team dad of, like, the siblings um, growing up. So, so yeah, he's very much, like, taken on that role his entire life for sure. So, basically, you guys gave him the practice – he needed to become this great <laughs> NBA role model and, and dad to all these young Thunder players, right? Yeah, basically, I'm the reason he's so great. So you're yeah. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you should absolutely take credit for all of his accomplishments. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> and thank you for joining us. I really am excited about this because you're well known on social media and Twitter. And, and I love your takes. I love seeing what you have to say. But also, for those that don't know, 
the podcast that you host, you get into some pretty deep dives on some serious stuff, mental health, race, politics, religion, you cover everything. Tell us about your podcast, how we can listen and just all the things that you do. Yeah. So my podcast is called Horford Happy Hour. I am with the CLNS Media Network in Boston and they signed me a few years ago when I had spoken with one of their um, media personalities about wanting to start my own podcast. And they were like, well, how about you just join our network? And this was when Al was back on the Celtics. So it seemed like a really good fit and the network's amazing. Um, They give me free reign. So I can swear we can talk about (laughs) sex. We can talk about, you know, the racy, juicy stuff. And um, they love my unfiltered opinions, which is like really great for me because I don't have to like obviously filter myself or hold back at all. And so, yeah, it's been going really, really well. I'm a few seasons in. I just did a five part mini series on taboo topics. Um, before the new year. And that was really fun. I had a new guest on every week. Um, We drink during the podcast, which is fun. (laughs) And that also helps me um, be my most authentic, unfiltered self. So um, I try a new kind of wine or champagne every week that I can introduce to listeners, let you know if I like it or if I don't. They're also like very cost friendly and they're just, you can pick them up at pretty much any store in the States. So, um, so yeah, I have fun with it. It's, it's been, you know, a really cool journey and, um, I've had a lot of support, which is amazing. And I'm just, I'm looking forward to the future, hopefully doing another mini series here soon. And, um, yeah, I can be found on iTunes, all podcasting platforms, pretty much the CLNS media network, in Boston. Um, so yeah, it's been really, really great. Yeah. I'm a big fan of your podcast. Um, it was the wine, it was the wine pairing that did it for me. So (laughs) our listeners all know that I'm like the, the connoisseur of wines at daily thunder and you actually recommended one of my favorite wines. I think it was on the women empowerment episode. It was the Francis Coppola red blend. I like the red blend and I like the Malbec. Those are both two of my favorites. And so after that, I was like, okay, this girl knows what's up. <laughs> this podcast is legit. So I'm a big fan ever since. <laughs> oh, I love hearing that. And the Francis Coppola line mm-hmm. in general is so good. Yes, um, it is. And it's, it won't break the bank, but at the same mm-hmm. time, like it's a good glass of wine. Yeah, it's one of my go-tos at Target. It's, it's a good one. <laughs> love it. Love it. I don't know anything about wine, but I love the Godfather movie. So I actually bought some Francis Ford Coppola wine for uh, my wife and I. Just She loved it. I wasn't a big fan, but I felt like I was supporting uh, the Godfather director. So I was happy about that. Uh, there you go. Can I, can I ask you a quick question? Do you have a yeah. wine pairing recommendation for Thunder Games for our listeners? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, I think it depends on how wrecked do you want to get. <laughs> so, like... Well, it, yeah. I mean, I think either way, if, you know, if, if we're losing, you're going to want to drink some wine. If it's going really well and the Thunder are mounting a 20 point comeback, you want to drink some wine. So yeah. I think, you know, what's your, what's your best recommendation? I really love, like if we're celebrating or if we're like mm-hmm. in the playoffs and we're just feeling sexy, yeah. I just feel like some La Marca Prosecco is okay. amazing. It mm-hmm. won't give you a headache. Um, it's really nice. It's not super expensive, but it doesn't taste cheap at all. Um, so that's a fun one. And then also I really love, are you familiar with the line, um, the Josh line? Yeah, I am. Josh Sellers. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I, I love them as well. And that's like good for like, if you want a good glass of wine, but you're just like chilling, you know? Okay. We'll have to check that out. (laughs) (laughs) Now, Anna, I wanted to welcome you officially to Thunder Fandom. I feel like from our perspective, most of the players that come here really, you know, it's a small market, but they tend to end up falling in love with the city and the fans because the fans are so passionate and they tend to be a little bit warmer and uh, loving to the players, all players, than maybe some other cities in the (laughs) NBA. So I wanted to discuss with you how have OKC fans embraced Al and you, both of you, maybe compared to your last stop in Philly. <laughs> this is what everyone wants to hear about. They just want the juice. That's it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm I'm here to give it to you. It's fine. Um, so 
OKC has been so amazing, so welcoming. I know that people say like, cause I'm from the Midwest, people are like, oh, people from the Midwest are so friendly and they, you know, please and thank you and hold doors and stuff. It's like, there's gotta be something in the water in Oklahoma <laughs> because people are so friendly. And I don't know if it's just in like stark contrast to Philly, <laughs> um, <laughs> but everyone has been so nice. So excited to have Al and our family um, like no negativity. They've like really embraced us. And so we've like embraced them. And like, I, I'm like, I I've been getting a lot of Sixers fans who are like feeling like super like salty, like, well, why do you, you know, why do you like OKC if, you know, I barely been there and, um, you didn't like us and, you know, he was here for a whole season and blah, blah, blah. Well, at the same time, like, okay, see, people aren't telling me to go kill myself or calling me like derogatory terms. So that's why I like Oklahoma better. Um, Philly, it's a very you know, low bar, but I'm glad that we cleared that for you. <laughs> it is, I mean, it was a low bar, but like you guys have just exceeded expectations. Um, everyone's been super cool. And like Philly, they're just, even their own fans will admit they are just so negative and they probably wouldn't use the word toxic, but I'm going to use the word toxic. Mm -hmm. Um, and just so horrible to their own players. Like even now still like people, I still see people like talking trash about Ben and stuff. And like, I'm just sitting over here feeling so bad. And so, yeah, it's been a complete, completely different experience. Well, that's great to hear. And we truly are happy to have your brother and you and the whole family here in OKC. So that is really cool to hear that it goes both ways. We also know that you recently became an aunt, not for the first time, right? So how many nieces and nephews do you have now? So this will be the fourth and it's Al's fourth. He's the only one to have had kids. Okay. I'm like not a kid person, but I love <laughs> my nieces and nephews. Um, kids to me are just like sticky and weird, but like, <laughs> I love the ones I'm related to. They're mm -hmm. amazing, adorable. Um, so Al has a little boy and then three little girls. And mm -hmm. so he just had Nova, my newest niece. And yeah, it's been, it's been amazing having a new little addition to the family. Have you had the opportunity to meet her yet? I know with COVID, these things can be kind of difficult, but have you met her? <laughs> um not in person uh, which really? sucks <laughs> yeah that I mean, suck. traveling like traveling right now sucks mm -hmm. I'm in Michigan um mm -hmm. so are our other siblings else you know obviously in Oklahoma and they have been so cautious with COVID as well mm -hmm. like because they have so many little kids like they're like right. all under five so like they've been so cautious and so when it's safe We'll definitely all get together. I'm getting married this year, so is my younger oh, sister. Cool. And so um, we're hoping that everyone will be able to be together at the weddings this summer. So Congratulations. I hope so, too. Thank That'll you. be exciting. Yeah, Thank congrats. That's, that's awesome to hear. So speaking of your family, let's talk about you guys. The Horford Royal Family, Dominican, <laughs> American, Global, Universal, MEA, Miss Universe, Media <laughs> Domination with you. Al probably could have been a media star as well, just seeing how he is in interviews <laughs> or maybe a volleyball pro. Where does all this excellence come from in the Horford family and how do we get a piece of that? I don't know, man. It just, maybe it's in the water or something. <laughs> um, if I figure it out, I will let you in on the secret. Um, I also, I mean, just like genetics, we all just ended up being like super tall, weirdly athletic people. I don't know. Um, obviously my sister-in-law is gorgeous. She was Miss Universe and um, they've got gorgeous kids and, you know, the boys in the family all have like the whole basketball thing. Our dad played. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of like a family thing, family tradition. Do, do you have any slackers in your family or just like the rest of you are like all excelling and there's just one of you, you know, like the Peyton Manning family, there's always that brother who gets made fun of because he's not doing anything. Are there any slackers? Oh, we totally make fun of each other. Like everyone, <laughs> everyone gets a turn at getting made fun of. I'm the middle child. So I feel like I get made fun of a lot, especially because I'm very like, like I'm typically girly and like, I like doing my hair and makeup and I like dressing well. And like all the other siblings, like could just wear basketball shorts and like 
go play, <laughs> you know, a pickup game somewhere. And I'm like, you know, um, <laughs> so I think that I'm quite different from them in that aspect, but, but yeah, no, I mean, we have our own things going. Our little brother has a clothing line, advanced apathy. Our little sister is an amazing photographer, um, Maria. And then I've got my podcast, our brother, John, um, played D one at Michigan and Florida. And then he played in the G league. And obviously Al has played professionally for a million years. So, um, so yeah, we all have our own thing going. We're all really busy, um, and all really supportive of each other, which is really, really great. So yeah, it's fantastic. That's good. That's so good to hear. Um, you alluded earlier to how Horford kind of gives off, you know, he has some, like has dad vibes and a lot of his teammates have referred to him as their favorite teammate, including Jason Tatum. Um, all of our young Thunder players all adore him. So what is it about Al that makes him such a, a good teammate and someone that players want to play with? I think he's just steady. Like he's steady. He's reliable. He's been in the game for so long. He's a great, you know, veteran to look up to. Mm -hmm. Al, this is going to sound like (laughs) so dorky, but he doesn't club. He doesn't party. He doesn't drink. He doesn't do any, you know, he doesn't smoke weed. Mm -hmm. Um, He doesn't do any drugs. Like he's very much like, hey, guys, want to go home and play Monopoly after the game? (laughs) Like, we're all like, "Um, I want to go to the club. And he's like, how about some Uno? You know, so it's like very like wholesome um so yeah he's just I think he's just reliable he's just Mm -hmm. someone that the young guys can really look up to he's like always down to give advice because he's learned so much about being in the league and Mm -hmm. I think like that kind of candor is really important to young players um who are still trying to find their way Mm -hmm. and I think he's just so like I said such a steady presence for them Yeah, that's exactly the type of personality that we love in our players in Oklahoma City. There are no clubs to go to, so Mm -hmm. that's perfect for us. And that's the kind of like role model that we want for our young players too. You know, we want them to be responsible and to be motivated and to to be passionate about the game. And I feel like Al Horford really he brings that not out not only in himself but in his teammates as well. And I think we all appreciate that. And speaking of those young players, you know, Al has been on a Celtics team that was a great team. I mean, that was that was a title contending team. Then the 76ers, despite their hiccups, they had a lot of talent and they had title aspirations. What's it like cheering for Al now on a younger Thunder team? I mean, this is a team that, you know, traded away, uh, you know, Russell Westbrook and Chris Paul and, and all these guys. So, the Thunder in the middle of a rebuild, but more competitive than thought because of Al and Shea Gilgis-Alexander, you know, taking the lead. George Hill has been great. The Thunder have a lot of talent, but it's young talent. So it's kind of a different type of team setup than he's been on. So what's it been like kind of cheering for a younger team now with Al? Yeah. So, I mean, it's good. I think that this team, obviously, like you said, they're a young team, but they're fun to watch. There's lots of talent. There's lots of potential. And I think Al knows that. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but like the way Al is like this season compared to last, he's just more of himself because he's playing the way that he, you know, he thrives in this position. He thrives playing this way. He thrives um, this team environment. And I think he's just grateful to be somewhere that really embraces his style of play. And I think that he is very comfortable being the person that people can look to or like, you know, if we need a clutch shot, um, he's wanting and willing to step up, which I think is really, really important. And yeah, we're young, but like at the same time, I think he looks at it as like another day at the office. We're going to play the best that we can. We're going to get done. Um, And because that's what, that's what we're here to do. And so, so yeah, it's, it's been good. That's good. Yeah. And I've said this to other people and I think it's worth repeating now. Al Horford's a five-time NBA all-star. I mean, this is an elite level player and you have Shea Gilgis Alexander, who's taken this leap to near all-stardom himself so I, I don't know how Philly messed it up is what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> like, like when you look at uh, how Al 
was what the position he was put in last year and then seeing how he's playing this year, you know, you talked about him being more himself this year, you know, when you, and you see the chemistry between Shea and Al Horford and what they're able to accomplish with the starting unit and how much Al Horford is thrived. you know, it's a given first quarter Shea and Al, they're going to hook up for like 15 points <laughs> back and forth. Right. Al's going to hit a bunch of threes. I just don't know how Philly screwed that up to be quite honest. It was Al a is terrible fit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, sorry. It was, it was just, it was a terrible fit. I, and their, I mean, their team had so much talent. They were exploding with talent, but mm-hmm. between coaching and the different roles that every guy was trying to play, they just, it doesn't matter how talented a team was, like, unless you have LeBron James or something, like, you're just not going to win games. You're not going to gel. You're not going to produce. And, like, you could tell, like, their chemistry was just off. They didn't know how to play with each other. And it just, it impacted everybody. But Al obviously took the majority of the scrutiny because he signed the the giant contract, you know, that, that led to him being on the team. And he knows that that's part of the deal. Like he knows that that's part of the game. Al barely looks on social media. Um, he's barely <laughs> ever on social media and he ignores a lot of that stuff, but at the same time, like they were just so brutal. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, it was, it was a tricky situation. Yeah, that's a a perfect lead into my next question, actually. So you just mentioned Al Horford's barely ever on social media. And I think that players are really used to this kind of negativity and they they've kind of, you know, become immune to it over time. But what's it like being a family member, having to see people say these things about your family or even about you and about your podcast stuff that and even about stuff that's like completely unrelated to basketball and Al Horford. I just have to imagine that's really difficult as a family member to have to deal with that. It's like (laughs) exhausting. So (laughs) it's really exhausting. And to constantly feel like you have to defend someone, like to you Mm -hmm. guys, it probably just looks like, oh, there she goes again, like riding her brother's coattails or like whatever. But it's like, no, I would do this for any of my siblings. I'm very protective. Mm -hmm. Don't mess with my family because I'll come for you. And like, (laughs) it's just one of those things where you try to ignore the majority of it. But like Mm -hmm. when someone crosses a line, it's just almost impossible to ignore. Like when you get death threats or rape threats or like people are just saying racist things or just horrible things about your family, like at a certain point, Mm -hmm. like anyone would break and be like, hey, enough is enough. And I feel like I really like try to get this across to people when I respond to like someone on Twitter or whatever, that Mm -hmm. is like the hundredth comment I've seen. Like I don't respond to everything like, but there are certain comments and certain people or certain times where I just really feel like, um, a clap back is warranted. (laughs) (laughs) And a lot of people have like learned not to like with me or my mentions. Sorry that I said the F word. Um, (laughs) but like, it's just, it's very frustrating and you just constantly feel like, you know, you're playing defense. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. I hope that you aren't getting any of that from Thunder fans and I hope they're listening to this and they understand Mm -hmm. that, you know, players, families are on social media too, and they see these things and it's hard for them to just ignore it. Actually, one of our favorite followers is, uh, Mike Mascal's dad, Bob, (laughs) it's a big fan of daily thunder and we're a big fan of him but it does remind us to be conscious that everything that we say on social media um anytime you criticize a player the players probably aren't even the ones that are looking at it it's usually Mm -hmm. you know family and so i hope everyone that's listening to this podcast the better fans are conscious of that going forward because it's totally unnecessary Totally. And you know, they would never say it to the player's face. Yeah. Like the same people (laughs) calling Al names, like if he walked by them would be like, can I have your autograph? Yeah, exactly. You know, so it's very frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. And I would absolutely not try to start a fight with Al Horford because he is enormous (laughs) and could definitely (laughs) take you. (laughs) Yeah. I don't care if he wants to sit at home and play Uno all night. That man is still, (laughs) (laughs) he he will mess you up. Uh, (laughs) So last question, speaking of of Al Horford and, you know, his image, you, you talked about, you know, how he doesn't go clubbing and he's, he gives dad vibes. Is there anything that comes to your head that, 
kind of goes against his button up image, like whether some weird story or quirk or anything that that our listeners don't know about Al that you think is just kind of a funny thing about your brother? Man, you're putting me on the spot here. <laughs> I am. And, and if you don't have anything, we'll just edit this out. I can't think. He's like the ultimate professional to the point where like if he was your sibling, you'd be like, all right, enough. Like you're making us look really bad. So just maybe stop. <laughs> like um, if you asked me about any other sibling, I would have a story. But Al is just, he's he's pretty put together. Like what you see is what you get. He goes to work. He comes home to his kids that he adores and his best friends with and <laughs> like his beautiful wife. And that's about it. <laughs> that's that's like that. answer, though. I mean, that's that's great, though. To, yeah. I mean, what you see is what you get. It's He's the real deal. Right. Was he like that in college, too, even at Florida? Or is that kind of something that he started when he came to the league? Um, OK, in Florida, I mean, everyone's <laughs> like you're when you're in college, you're in college. Yeah. Um, I was really young when he was in college, like when he was with the Gators, but at the same time, that was the best team in the nation. They won mm-hmm. two back-to-back national championships. Yeah. So they walked around campus like they were gods. Like, I'm yeah. not going to lie. <laughs> like, they thought their sh- didn't stink. You know, they're like young guys on college campus. Um, mm-hmm. so, so nothing like out of the ordinary, just like typical, yeah. typical college experience, I would say. I'm just trying to imagine Al at a frat party in a bro tank. <laughs> <laughs> but it's I hard think to he was the now. one. He was the <laughs> one who like was like looking after his friends, really, like mm-hmm. Joe and Noah and Corey Brewer and yeah. like Torian Green and stuff. Like just kind of like looking out for everyone, really. Always with the dad vibes. <laughs> yeah, like he's he's told me like at high school parties because we would talk about like. Um, Mm -hmm. partying like when we were younger like he wouldn't party and he'd be the one who would like answer the door when the cops came (laughs) like you know um so so yeah Yeah. that's just the kind of guy he is that's good the last question I have I know that Al is really close to Billy Donovan speaking of Florida and Mm -hmm. there were lots of rumors and I believe Al even confirmed it himself that he was interested in coming to Oklahoma City back in 2016 if Kevin Durant would have re-signed and stayed. And then I think every Thunder fan, after hearing that, the thought of Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, Al Horford, uh, Stephen Adams, and Victor Oladipo, I mean, Thunder fans think about that. I think still to this day, what could have been had Al signed in 2016, had KD stayed. And I think that's another like salt in the wound uh, from mm. KD leaving because not only would the Thunder have been a title contender if he stayed and didn't go to the Warriors and mess up the entire NBA, uh, <laughs> but the Thunder would have had Al Horford too to go along with those guys. I don't know how much you want to get into it, but can you mm. confirm or deny if you think that is true? Well, first of all, okay, <laughs> I had my own selfish reasons for wanting Al to go to OKC. And it was because, like, for years, I had, like, this secret crush on Steven Adams. <laughs> Who doesn't? Who doesn't? <laughs> right? Like, Paul Drogo, like, oh, my yes. God. You're not you alone. <laughs> yeah. So he, um, so I had, like, the biggest crush on him. And, like, Al knew about it. My dad knew about it. And I was always, like, hey, how about you slip my number to <laughs> Steven Adams, you know? And I'm not someone who, like, ever dates athletes. Like, athletes have been in my DMs. Like, they s- still do it. Like, I've, I've never been into athletes. And I secretly, like, had the – he just seems like the the coolest dude. Yeah. Um, yeah. He seems, like, so amazing. So I had personal reasons. I wanted him to secretly go to OKC. Um, it really was, like, between OKC and Boston – um, as far as I know, like he did really, really think about going, um, to OKC and it just ended up not working out. He obviously ended up with the Celtics. He had a lot of really great offers. Um, but he loves Billy and, um, I mean, yeah, what could have been, that's like <laughs> the big question. I feel like that team could have been amazing. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, so it, it, it didn't end up working out that way. Um, but they were definitely up there. That's that's good to hear. I mean that 
to me, that's the easy title favorite had, had he come. And, you know, maybe you're with Stephen Adams right now, too. Although you're getting married. So I guess it worked <laughs> out for everybody. <laughs> okay, but uh, I guess I was going to, I guess you're engaged. So you're, you're fine. But I was going to say, <laughs> how upset were you that Al Horford coming to Oklahoma City meant that Stephen Adams had to go? <laughs> if I were single when that happened... <laughs> I would have just stopped watching basketball altogether. Like I just would have been so annoyed because my whole family knew about my mm-hmm. secret little crush for like years. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, so, um, <laughs> yeah, That's that was, hilarious. that was, um, that was funny. <laughs> so, uh, is there anything we'd like to in the podcast with as far as anything you'd like to promote, anything that you have coming up that you'd like people to listen to or watch or anything like that? I would just say, um, so I have my podcast, Horford Happy Hour, um, on iTunes, all podcasting platforms. But then also our brother, John, actually has a podcast coming out as well on the CLNS Media Network uh, called the Blueprint Athletes Basketball Podcast. And he has a Blueprint Athletes Basketball app where John played for Billy Donovan at Florida as well. Um, he played for John Beeline at Michigan. Um, he basically has taken everything he's learned under these amazing coaches and has put it into an app for athletes. So, and it's, and it's for beginners to, you know, people trying to go D1. Um, so it's the Blueprint Athletes Basketball podcast and app. So I, I would like to throw that out there. Fantastic. Such a good sister. <laughs> she is a great sister. You support your brother so well. That is fantastic. Uh, Anna, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for joining us that you're a fantastic guest. Uh, we've had some NBA players on here and, and coaches and, and NBA analysis, and I'll take you over all of them. Thank you. Oh. I, I absolutely, you're, you're a lot of fun. Uh, thank you for joining us today. And thank you so much for listening to the Daily Thunder podcast. Perfect. Seriously, I mean, you're. you're I was going to, I was going to slip in there. Thank you for popping my um, OKC interview, Cherry, because you guys are the, <laughs> the, the first ones that I've taken as an interview. We appreciate it. Thank you for listening and for supporting the Daily Thunder podcast. You can follow our guest, Anna Horford, at Anna Horford, and you can follow me, at Brandon Rabar, as I cover the Thunder beat. If you subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com slash dailythunder, you'll receive early access to Daily Thunder content, including bonus podcast segments, the exclusive weekend edition newsletter, and other perks like free shirts, special pricing at local businesses, and more. This podcast is produced by Rachel Jameson. You can follow her, eh, questionable, at Rachel Jameson. Send your questions and feedback to dailythunder at gmail.com and stay on dailythunder.com every day to catch the latest Thunder news, recaps, analysis, interviews, and all kinds of nonsense.